Hi and welcome to another NERPG tutorial. In this video I will be demonstrating how to create a non-humanoid player character using a free asset from the Asset Store and some of the new wizards that are included on GitHub. If you don't already have a copy of NERPG, you can go to nerpg.org slash downloads where you will find the link to the GitHub source code. If you're watching this video at some point in the future, then if there is a newer version than any RPG Engine 0.13 Alpha available, the wizards that I'm demonstrating today will be in that version. But for now, you can follow the instructions for the installation, which you can find at the bottom of the GitHub page. And there's also a video available called How to Get Started with NERPG 0.10.1 Alpha, but the instructions are still valid for the version that I will be demonstrating today. So let's go ahead and get started. We're just going to click on Open in Unity on this Centaur asset. For some reason, the package manager has decided to go crazy and not show the Centaur, so we are going to type in Fantastic Creatures number 5 Centaur and go ahead and click Import. We're just going to import the entire package. And you will see, if you look at the console, that there are a few error messages there. Something about the controller isn't properly compiling, so we can just go ahead and delete that Centaur controller. We're going to let this recompile, and those error messages should have gone away now. The next thing that we are going to do is we are going to go to Tools, NERPG, Wizard, and New Game Wizard, and we're going to create a new game. I'll call this one Centaur vs. Centaur, and we'll want to copy an existing scene. We'll be using a scene that's actually included with this asset, because I kind of like the way that it looks. And the first scene name, I'm just going to call Fight Scene. And I'm going to click on this True Fantastic Creatures directory and pull in the Fantastic scene, which is the one we want. And I'm going to click Create and just let the wizard go ahead and create the game and set everything up for me. Once it's done, you'll notice the Centaur versus Centaur scene load scene is loaded. We can look under Games now, and we now have a Centaur versus Centaur game directory with two scenes, the fight scene and the load scene. We do need to do a little bit of fixing and cleanup on the fight scene. So let's double click that and go ahead and load it. First thing we're going to need to do is get rid of the centaur that's in there because we'll be spawning our own centaur to make sure that he's properly configured. We can also get rid of the main camera as we don't need that. We're going to get rid of the canvas because we don't need that either, nor do we need the event system. The only thing we need is the terrain, the directional lights, and then the environment, which includes all of the rocks and everything in there. So we'll go ahead and save that. And we want to go to the navigation window and click on bake and click once again at the bottom on bake. And just make sure that we've baked a nav mesh in there so that the enemy centaur can run around as any RPG does rely on navigation mesh for the NPCs. Now that this scene is properly set up, we could go back to the centaur versus centaur loading scene. And we can see that our game manager is configured. The default starting zone is the fight scene. So if I was to hit the play button right now, then I would be able to click on new game and start the game and my character would be available and running around inside the scene. But of course this game is called Centaur vs. Centaur. So let's just exit out of the game and go ahead and set up a centaur as our player character. First, we need to do a little bit of configuration on the Centaur. So we need to add some events so that the attacks will work. 
So we're going to click on the Centaur Rig Attack 1. Open up Events and just move the timeline forward until we see a boat where that attack is happening. We're going to click this little Add Event thing here and put an event in called Hit and Apply. We'll do the same thing for Attack 2. Pull the timeline forward until we get to a boat where that would actually be performing a hit. Click the Add Event, type in Hit, and Apply. And once again for Attack 3, we'll do the same thing. Boat where he hits. Click on Add Event, type in Hit, and click Apply. This will ensure that the centaur is actually able to do damage when he hits, hits something, otherwise he'll just swing and every swing would miss because any RPG does damage when it detects the hit event in the middle of the attack animations. Next we're going to clean up this centaur prefab a little bit. First we're going to get rid of that script that we deleted earlier, we don't need that. We are also going to get rid of the character controller. Any RPG has its own character controller, so we don't need the one that's attached to the centaur right now. It'll just cause errors if we have it. And finally, we're just going to null out the existing controller because any RPG has its own controller, which it will configure at runtime. We can go ahead and save that. And now that this unit is configured, we are ready to actually run our new character wizard. So we'll go to Tools, Any RPG, Wizard, New Character Wizard. It automatically detected the game name properly since we have the Centaur vs. Centaur scene open. That's what we need. We're going to check the button here, Set as Default Player Character. And then we are just going to pull this Centaur prefab into the Character Model box, at which point it detected the name and set it and it properly detected the head bone, which is used for the unit frames. And now we just have to fill in the animations. So we'll go back to this Centaur folder here. I will select the three attack animations and pull them into attack clips. Then I will select the idle one animation and pull it into the idle clip. Then under the Move Forward clip, I'm going to put in the first Walk animation. For the Move Forward Fast clip, I am going to put in the Centaur Run animation. Then we'll scroll down to the Combat animations. Under Combat Idle clip, I'm just going to pull in the Battle Idle clip. And then I'm going to check the two boxes for Combat Move Forward and combat move forward fast, which will basically just mirror these existing walk and run animations. Finally, let's scroll down to the bottom and look for a death clip. So we see death one right here, and we'll just pull that into the death clip. And that's really all that we need to do. So we'll go ahead and click create. And this wizard is now going to set this character up and make it our default player character. If you look in the game manager, you can see that the default player unit profile is now Centaur. And if we open up the resources folder under the Centaur vs. Centaur game, you can see that we indeed have a unit profile called Centaur Unit. And it has been automatically configured for us. So let's go ahead and press play, and we should now actually be able to start as the centaur with our player character. So if I click play and new game, you can see that there's the centaur. And if I click start game, now I can run around as the centaur. And this is great, but this game is called Centaur vs. Centaur. So we need to go a step further, and we need to make an enemy centaur. So what I'm going to do is, under the unit profile directory here, where the centaur unit is, I'm just going to hit Control D to duplicate the centaur unit, and I will call this duplicated one the evil centaur unit. 
you want to make sure to change the resource name because this is how the database is looking everything up. So evil centaur will needs to be different from the other centaur name. And the character name, this is what's going to be displayed above his head, is evil centaur. In order to make sure that the centaur is actually evil, we'll have to assign him a faction. And to do that, I'm going to demonstrate a new wizard. It is called the Scriptable Template Content Wizard. And this wizard will just basically copy certain templates into your game. And it's pretty flexible. There's lots of different templates available. In this case, I want the enemy faction template. And I also want the attack ability template. So the enemy faction template will basically copy in an enemy faction which has a default disposition of negative one, meaning that your reputation with this, everybody's reputation with this faction is minus one or hostile. It's also going to copy the attack ability template, which will copy the attack ability, the attack effect, a weapon miss audio, as well as a prefab that will basically appear when you hit the character. It's like a, some white sparks as well as the health power resource, because if you're attacking someone, they basically need to have health so that you can do damage to them. So with the enemy faction and attack ability templates selected here, I can go ahead and just hit create. And now if I look in the resources folder for centaur versus centaur, you can see under ability effect, I now have the attack effect. Under faction, we have the enemy faction. Under prefab profile, we've got that particle. And so we're going to go back to unit profile. And under the evil centaur unit, we are just going to click this little button right here. And we should be able to assign the enemy faction. Let's save that. And the next thing that we want to do is we want to go to the prefab directory and select the game manager. And just make sure that every character in our game has health. So to do that, we're going to scroll down until we find power resources. Click the plus sign there. And then click this little arrow and choose health. We are also going to click the plus sign under ability names because we want every character in our game to have the attack ability. So we'll click on attack. And now every character in our game, these are all global settings in the game manager here. So every character in our game has health and every character in our game can attack. So let's go ahead and save that. and. Next, we actually need to add the enemy centaur into the scene so that he can spawn. So we'll go back, we'll open up the fight scene. And in the search box here, we're going to search for a unit spawn node. I'm just going to drag that in, kind of throw it up there spin it around so that the blue arrow is pointing towards where our character will be spawning. This is basically the forward direction of whatever we're spawning. And in the scene, under the unit spawn node, we are going to add a unit profile name here. And I'm just going to type in evil centaur. And then this node will automatically spawn the evil centaur. Make sure that our character is spawning far enough away from the evil centaur. I'm just going to scroll out a little bit here. And I'm going to search my hierarchy for the default spawn location. And I'm just going to drag it in, throw it right about here. That's probably far enough away. And this is where my player is going to spawn. Let's hit save. Go back to the loading scene, centaur versus centaur and press play.
you can see my player is here and the evil centaur is over there and I now have an ability called attack on my action bars. So I'll move toward him, he should aggro me and run at me and start attacking and I can hit my attack button and then I'm going to be attacking him. Now there's one further thing that we'll probably want to do right now. You'll notice the combat is pretty boring. Each player has 100 health, but they're really not doing a whole lot of damage to each other. And that's basically because my character is kind of lacking any sort of stats right now. He's got health, but that's pretty much it. He's got no physical power or spell power. Um, he doesn't really have any stats at all. So let's go ahead and use the wizard again to add some stats so that we can make this combat a little more interesting so we can kill our enemy in less than five minutes. I'm going to go to Tools, any RPG wizard, go to the scriptable template content wizard, and this time I'm going to add the RPG character classes template. And what that's going to do is bring in a number of character classes, the priest, ranger, warrior, and wizard, as well as a bunch of armor classes, weapon skills, once again the power resources. And specifically what I'm looking for is for my warrior class because the warrior class gets strength and that strength will be converted into physical damage. So we'll go ahead and click create and just let the wizard do its thing. It has to copy in a number of resources here because there are a lot of dependencies the different weapon skills, the armor skills, the different stats. And now that everything has been successfully copied, I'm going to go back to my unit profile here for the centaur unit. And we are going to go under character class name and assign my centaur as a warrior, at which point he's now going to get the strength and the extra attack power. So let's just save that and go ahead and press play. Play new game and we'll call him the good centaur and click on start game. And now we have the good centaur and the evil centaur. You can see now that my character has some strength with a value of five as well as two physical power from that conversion ratio that he got. So now when he attacks the enemy centaur, who doesn't have a character class, you can see that my character is doing eight to 10 damage per swing. And the enemy centaur or the evil centaur is only doing two damage per swing, meaning now that I can kill this guy much faster. And in about, I don't know, 10 to 12 swings, then our evil centaur will die, and our good centaur has now saved the day. So that's basically how you can get quickly set up using the new wizards that are available on GitHub, and make yourself a non-humanoid player character who can run around and kill other enemy NPCs. So I hope you enjoyed that, and if you did, then don't forget to subscribe to the NERPG YouTube channel and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you in the next video.